Hey YouTube, Mike the Renai Guy here. How are we all doing today? Hope you all had a safe and productive week. All right, today's video is actually going to be on um, questions and answers that I get off the channel. And they're not going to be any particular order. They're just going to be um, questions that I get a lot. So we're going to go over um, and answer a bunch of these questions. All right, my first question that I get a lot is the lubricant that comes in um, the venting for the condensing units. So it's the venting that has the plastic inside. All right, inside of the horizontal and the vertical vent kit. So here is a horizontal vent kit like I've shown numerous videos and a vertical one you're going to get a packet of this Ubink um, lubricant and it's the Ro Rolex vent system and this is basically what it is all right it has and I'm going to include all this in the description below um, it's got a part number of 0090363 and then it's an NL6984AA. And all of this product is produced in the Netherlands. Non has this, but do not swallow. Um, so I will put this in the description below as far as if you need to get extra. But one packet, once you get it down to the bottom and open it up, one packet I have found, and you don't need a lot of it, one packet I have found that you could do quite a few joints with these things. Now, it's not just made for the um, horizontal or vertical. You need to put it on all of the joints. So if you have a 39, a 19, a 10, a 45, another elbow, you need to use this. And very little inner and outer gasket. So it goes on the outer gasket. And the, all you have to do is just coat it on the outer and the inner gasket. Um, oh, just to let you know, I have my new camera rig working. I have my new stabilizer, my new tripod, and I have a brand new 7-inch screen, so I don't have to stare at this tiny little screen anymore. Um, I may, you may just see my eyes wander up because I'm staring at the new screen, so just bear with me until I get used to it. All right, so that's this. Okay, another question. On the condensing units whether it be the R or the RUR there is a vent that comes out the middle and then if you're looking at the unit so okay so I'm staring at the unit so let's just say that this external unit is the vent to the left of it is a two inch um, fitting that has a cap in it they all have a screw in here and in the um, the actual um, air intake, but we're going over this. So let's just remove this. Now you have this black adapter. The black adapter is if you're going to adapt or put in the two-inch PVC, and then in the unit in a bag, you're going to get besides those screens, you're going to get two stainless steel screws and one will go into that hole right there and then the other one you'll see there's a hole on the vent but if you're not using this they get confused people think that you could take the concentric venting and put it over this no you can't this thing if you're going to use the concentric venting all right so that's the pipe within the pipe with the plastic inside and the box says for condensing units only you're to remove this throw it in the garbage and you're going to put your vent I don't want to push it in because it's a dickens to get out and you're going to put your vent let's just say you're going to go through the wall so you're going to put your vent right through this like that that's what you're going to do so Again, this is what you get. 
This is how it comes. There's no cap on this one. So it's just sitting on the top of the unit just like this. There's a cap on this one. Because if you use the concentric venting, if you use this venting to go, you know, you're going to take this off. Go through the wall with it. You leave this cap on. Again, go back in my video on venting for the RUR series and you'll see it. All right, but this black piece, you just chuck it in the garbage. All right, so that's that. <clears throat> okay, on the interior models. Okay, so we're going to make believe this is an interior model. So an interior model is going to have this type of collar on the top. All right, so it's going to be facing this way. So to the right, you're going to find this black nipple this well black rubber cap with this nipple and that's the way it comes if you're going to use just the horizontal vent tip so elbow and then the piece outside the wall like that so let's say that's just they're going out the wall you don't need to put a condensate trap on it that nipple here if you notice, the nipple goes through here to this outer ring right here. What it does is if you're going to go, say, up and then out six feet, five feet, or you're going to go up and back out six feet, five feet, or straight up with vertical vent, you need to take this rubber cap off and put this again made by Eubank and it'll be in the description below a condensate trap now you can make this out of a rubber tube you have to make a little loop in it zip tie it you can just put it to the wall put the tube down to your drain and then put your tube with a gear clamp into this but this costs around $50. You get the trap, you get a wall mounting bracket, so it clips right in. You get this rubber hose. Now, this is an older model. The newer model does not have the spring on it. You get a three quarter inch, again, forgive me because I'm pointing at the screen. Um, you get this three quarter inch, um, opening here and then you get this three-quarter by half rubber bushing and then two plastic gear clamps well they're like squeeze clamps so basically you're gonna put this on here you're gonna put this on here this is on the top you're gonna mount that just like that just like that up against the wall then on the bottom of this this here, if you take a three-quarter CPVC coupling and three-quarter CPVC pipe, the coupling will fit perfectly. You just offset it, strap it to the wall, it'll hold it there. You don't have to glue it. You don't want to glue it because I'm going to show you another question that I get about this. You don't want to glue it. Just let gravity go and drain it and then bring it to the drain. Now. They asked about what do you need to do with this thing. Well, you need to prime it before you attach this. So this is here. I'm going to turn this way. This is here before you mount this to the wall. You got your pipe. What you need to do, hold this up straight, and you need to pour water into this. A bottle of water. Take a bottle of water, 12, 16 ounce bottle. Pour it into it until you get water out of the pipe. You want to prime this trap, okay? Um, you need to prime it because you're not going to get a lot of condensate. And if you're going to put this into, say, a sewer or, or um, a drain line, you're going to get sewer gas back up. And that's what this trap is for. Now, if you uh, to maintain this thing, what do you need to do? Well, now you, you got this thing that's been sitting there for a year. Well, when you service the unit, which we're going to get into a second, a question. What you want to do is disconnect 
everything. Now, of course, this here is still going to be mounted on the wall and take it off. Then you want to run you want to run bleach through this, run water through it, warm water, run some bleach and some warm water through this. And then this thing is removable. So you got your check in here and then you have the cup and how it goes in and then drains down. So you want to take this apart, you want to put some bleach, you want to take maybe um, a, 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 yeah, a brush and brush this all out. You know, because condensate makes this like slime. So you want to brush this all out. This here will come apart. See, there's the little check ball. And you can clean all of this. Just make sure, get the ball back in, get this back in. It goes in this way. Doesn't matter which way, it, it'll, it spins around. Get this in, and then it just locks in. Put your hose back on, mount it on the wall. That's part of, that should be part of your service. All right, now, I get questions about the service. Now, I have a complete video on um, doing the service. I show the flow aid. Again, nothing here. I am not sponsored by anybody. Nobody gives me anything. I get nothing for free. This is stuff I use and stuff I believe in. So that video with the flow aid explains about the flushing of the unit. You know, how to, you know, remove the inlet filter that's down here on the cold water, how to clean it. But I get a lot of plumbers and techs that actually send me um, a question that, you know, when they explain this to their customers, they look at them like they have three different heads. Give me one second. I just want to make sure we're still, I don't see the regular screen here. Yep. Okay. Sorry about that. Like I said, new rig. I just wanted to make sure that we were still going good. All right. So they kind of like these, like, and I get it too. Like these people look at you you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just trying to make some money. You're putting this two, three, four, five thousand dollar unit in. And now you're trying to sell me a year, um, service. But you're not trying to sell them. You, you know, you got to explain to them. So the first thing that we, you do is open up the manual and go to page 41. So on page 41 is a nice little drawing that Renai did explaining the procedures to servicing or descaling the unit. And it gives you 12 steps from start to finish. It gives you the different codes. And then, like, if, if you get what they call, like, an LCO, an LC9, or a double zero code, that's like, like your heat exchange has got real bad hardening in the arteries. So you got to call Renai Tech Support, and they'll, they'll actually put, put a case number down, and they'll give you um, the procedure to reset the PC board. But... We're not talking about that. Sorry, Bob. We're going to go off on a tangent here. So, you show them page 41. Now, on when you show them that, but the best way, and I just did it Friday, the best way to explain servicing, and they'll, they'll, their eyes will lighten up, is ask them, do you have one of those Keurig or Keurig coffee pots? You know, with the little canister... You pop it in, you get yourself a cup of coffee. 99.9% .9 of people will say, yes, I do. I had one guy that said, no, I don't drink coffee. So I couldn't do this to him. They'll say, like I said, 99.9% .9 will say, yes, I do. And then, now they're starting to look at you because they know where you're going. What does the coffee pot tell you? Like at least once a year, twice a year, or if you're a really big coffee drinker, maybe every quarter. It tells it's got to be descaled. I got to run the solution through it. And then they look at you. And then you turn to the unit and go, that's a $200, $250 coffee pot. This is a $1,000 coffee pot. And people just are like, whoa, you're right. Best way to explain it. Can't, can't beat it because it's 
True. The coffee pot does the same thing as this. And if that thing is telling you to descale it and they're doing it without question and buying that filter and buying the solution and spending a half hour, 45 minutes doing it, this is a thousand or better dollars, especially if it's an RUR unit, it could be $1,800, $2,000. Best way to explain it. Okay. Next thing. I get asked of um, location. You know, where could this thing be hung? Now, if, if you're installing this unit, if you buy this unit, you take it out of the box. Now, I brought out the manual. This is, this is a RL 9.4, and it's an exterior. Right here is the manual. And as you can see the photo over here, you have an interior and an exterior, and then it says, RL75 and RL94, and then and it says I and E, excuse me, I and I, and then it's got E and E, so interior, exterior. So this manual is for a 7.5 and a 9.4, interior, exterior, natural gas, propane. All right? So just open up the manual to page 7. And on page 7, Okay, page eight, page nine. And then they give you the other, you know, so page 10 has got, you know, dimensions. If you look, there's A to M, and they give you a house with every different scenario where it can go. And then it's got a description. Then it's got Canada, and then it's got United States. So for, for, uh, for example, Clearance to permanently close window. Canada and the United States, you could put it right up right up on it. Doesn't matter. It's permanently closed. All right. Clearance to window or door that may be opened. Canada is 36. United States is 12. Pretty much everything in the United States is 12 inches from a corner, a door, a window. Canada Again, could be 12, 36, there's, there's a few different. And then from a soffit to the center of the unit, because remember, that could be this vent. So this vent, like let's just say th this is outside. So this vent is sticking out of the wall. Center of that vent or center of this right here to a soffit, 36 inches. But go on to those pages. And right there, it explains to you or shows you exactly what you need to do. And then every now and then, if you feel like, you know, if the, if the person doesn't really want the booklet, take the booklet. Or you can get booklets from Renai. They'll send you booklets. You can go on and PDF it. They're all on the, on the internet. Okay, so there are your locations. Now... And I have, there's two questions. This is actually two questions for that same thing. A lot of the questions are, of course, it's not an exterior unit. It's an interior unit, but they have a basement. Now, there's a basement. There's a cellar. All right. Basements have above grade. Cellar is mostly below grade. Now, they ask, or I ask, the vent, where is it supposed to be? Well, if you look here right here it says reference a reference a is clearance above grade 12 inches canada 12 inches united states but it says a also applies to applicable snow line that is one of the main questions that i ask how much snow so you have this thing Sticking out of your house at 12 inches, going out of the wall. But just say that that part of your house gets a big snow load. And it's going to go above 12 inches. Well, you got to take that into consideration. Now, they make a snorkel where you only put pipe outside, and then the thing will raise it up about 36 inches. So you can gain like almost four feet, four and a, three and a half feet, three feet, but you gotta watch 
your snow load. And I'll give you an example. I had someone call me from Pennsylvania that had a brand new RL 94 interior installed. And the, the husband and wife knew there was something wrong and turned the unit off. Well, they called me and I asked them to send me pictures. Well, when they sent me a picture of outside this vent, the plumber, whoever installed it, dug out the dirt and had this thing almost totally under the ground and venting out. I, 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 just, I, was, I was just mesmerized by it. And I said to them, great, do not fire this thing. And then we got, I got them a plumber, and they actually moved it upstairs into a closet and just vented it right outside the wall, which was, you know, 12, 14 feet above the ground. So that's, that's something that I run into a lot, is that question in that venting. And my main question to you is, yes, it says 12 inches, but what's your snow load? Also, you got to watch bushes in front of the vent. They can't be in front of the vent. I don't even like them if they're two feet away. I want an opening for that vent to go out. Okay? All right. Another question. Taking off an old unit and putting a new unit on. Now, in Texas, I got tons of these questions. You know. I'm going to remove the old unit. I'm, uh, uh, just, let's just say it's a, an, an, an RL94 interior natural gas. So you have this vent and then you have another fitting that's on top of it. Now, this, is, this fitting is for non-condensing. And the problem with this is that when the... And a lot of times you don't, they don't have condensate traps. They don't have one of these. Or even if they do have some type of trap the condensate still tears up the fitting. So here is a fitting, and this is the exact collar that I took this off of. Now, if you go on my Instagram channel and look for the venting in an attic that's totally separated, that's what this came from. So, as you can see, this is not... This here is not part of the fitting. That's a crack. It's a perfect crack. It looks like a notch, but that's a crack. And if you see here, you see how this is so jagged? See the jagged edges? You see how it's all kind of starting to rust out? It's, and this here, especially when you put a fitting into here, they season together. And it seizes into this piece of aluminum. It's very hard to get apart. But if you're going to replace, especially if it's just a standard 11.5 uh, horizontal vent, change it. It's 70, $75. You got a brand new unit. Just change it. You have all of this damage done by, and it's just, it kind of, and you do get a little condensate on a, a, like a standard horizontal vent, you still get some condensate. And I find that when we take this off, this is, we call it shark's teeth because it's so jagged, they look like shark's teeth. So that is your, um, uh, that vent. Okay. Um, another question is, and I did a video on the outgoing heat exchange at the mister and the, um, uh, hot water thermistor. So the question is, all right, you, you showed, you know, how to service it and stuff like that, but I want to show you now the thermistors that I showed the video. Now this should be part of the service for you techs that go out there because it does accumulate debris. But I want to show you on this lower thermistor here. Now this unit here is under a year old. We removed it to put an RUR unit in. So let me zoom this camera in so you can see. Okay. 
and we get the proper tools. Remember, you need your Phillips screwdriver, I'm sorry, Phillips screwdriver, and your needle nose pliers. So we're going to rem remove this screw right here. So it's that one that has the washer head on it. Oop, there we go. It's got the washer head. Put it in our little magnetic tray. Then we want to grab the thermistor by the brass and give it a little bit of a wiggle. Can we see? Uh, I'm going to have to do it like that. Give it a little bit of a wiggle. Don't grab it by the wires. I'm going to have to get in the camera here. All right, now we're out. All right, let me zoom this back. Or actually, bring it back. Okay. Then you take off your little plastic tie here. You want to do all this without it in place. Because they come apart. Everything comes apart on a Renai. Put your thing and remove it. All right. Here is the thermistor. Look at that. You see the coating on it? That is all lime and mineral deposits that are on this. So that was perfect. Now I, I checked this out prior, you know, because I wanted to find a thermistor that had this coating on it to show you. Because once that coating gets on, you start lo it starts losing its, its, its sensibility. So we're just going to take a little sandpaper. Now, there is an O-ring on it. Let me pull off this O-ring and show you. That's the O-ring. See how small it is? That is in the same as this the Mr. Up here. It's the same tiny little O-ring. Again, in the description below. So save your O-ring and then take your emery cloth, a little bit of sandpaper, Clean it off, clean it off, clean it off. Now, if you're doing a service with the descaler, you can actually use some of that fluid. You know, get a, get a little rag and clean it off. So there is your thermistor cleaned, just like that. Now, don't forget, you need to put your O-ring back on. Again, I would take a rag, I would take some of that solution, I would clean it. So, oh, let me grab the most pliers. You want to be grabbing this from the brass. Don't grab it from the wire. As you can see how small these wires are. They're very tiny. You'll break them in a heartbeat. So just get the thermistor back in. Take your screw, your needle nose pliers. Once you get it in there, the O-ring will pop it back in. Come on. There we go. That's in. Then take your screw. And the screw with the two washer, it's got that washer, it's got a washer built onto it. It's actually hose, holding in the freeze protection, which is next to it, the ceramic piece right there, and the thermistor. So it's holding that in. Then don't forget to lose your screwdriver to plug the thermistor back in. And then take your little wire tie, put it around the wires, and... Who's your uncle? Bob. Okay, the upper thermistor. Again, you're taking this red wire tie off. You're taking this other wire tie off, so there's two of them right there. And then here's your thermistor. There's another one all the way down here. This is that long thermistor, so there's three of these wire ties that you're taking off. You're going to find your plug which is right here, 
and you're going to push and separate. So pull up, pull your wire up. Now we're going to use our new Weira, not Weir, angled socket because you're really going to need a mini to put the screw in but you're going to need one of these to get it out so either the weir tool check is that one that i show all the time and this is the this one i was trying out it's weir and it's the same thing a tiny little ratchet it comes with an extension and it comes with all these bits in a nice little folding case this one's a lot smaller thing than the actual weir and if you look over there I'll explain that to you in a little while so this works the best even a little mini screwdriver will not get in here I mean it will get in but it's not going to give you the torque you need to get these screws out so just get them loose Then if you want to, you can use, again, see how that little stubby screwdriver? That's what will fit perfectly into here. But again, it's not going to give you the torque to get the screws out. So you take off your one screw, magnetic tray, take off the other screw. Again, make sure that your screwdrivers are magnetized in the magnetic tray then you're going to pull off the little retainer clip again you should have be having extras of these in your uh, parts box so that's the little retainer clip again I'm going up to the to the damn screen there's your little retainer clip and then you take your needle nose pliers you pull out the thermistor that one happened to the washer is still in there see now this the mister is not bad it's clean but you still give it a little bit of a little scotch bright or emery, emery cloth clean it with the um solution make sure your o-rings in there have extra o-rings get it oh let me show you something with the clip the clip goes over the wire and then drops down onto this you see how it's it's held there it won't fall off there if you pull that back you see it falls off the wire but if you push that on there you go so have that on and then push it the mister in now again, you're servicing this thing, so the unit is disconnected. Switch is off, plug is out, knife switch is off. Or if they didn't do any of that, shut the breaker off. So now, you want to take your first little tiny screw, and again, one of these small little Phillips screwdrivers, and get the first screw in there. Again, be patient and just get it started don't make it all the way up get your second little screw and be patient make sure it's caught in there straight and then get down now both of them are in so you can snug them up. Again, you ain't gonna get, you see how my fingers are in here? You ain't getting a lot of torque with the screwdriver. So that's why these are very important. They're very helpful and very useful. Then get this back in and then you keep your finger on that. You don't go crazy making it up. You don't want to strip. It goes into a copper part of the heat exchanger. And it's like a little plate with two tap screws. There you go, tight. Then take your 
Find your thermistor plug, plug it in. Oh, this is another question. Actually, let me zoom it in. Sorry, my mind is not working well. Okay. You notice on these, you got red marks. Red mark, red mark, red mark. Well, that will show you. Here's the thermistor wire. Here is the, so this is the female side, this is the male side. You see, you have a red mark and a red mark. They want to meet, you want them to match. Okay? That's what the red marks are for. The factory puts them there. They put them there on the white wires. They put them on the blue wire, the green wire, all of the wires. You want to match those red. Now, remember, they, one will not fit the other, but there are some like here. You see this right here? This is the thermal fuse. You want to get them right. So there's two red marks. They will fit each other, even though because it's a series circuit, but you want to match the two red marks. Okay, then you want to get your wire tie back on. Get your wire tie back on. Just holds it nice and neat away from the actual burner plate itself and the heat exchanger. Get your wire tie back on. Get it all nice and tucked in. And there you go. That's it. All right. Let's see. Did we answer everything? Then, yep. Okay. All right. Um, so, if you have, my email will be below. If you have a question, or if you would like a Renai Guy sticker, send me your information. We'll mail it out or send me the comment. Again, I'm still having problems receiving. I get the comments, but it's very hard for me to answer. And then I notice like a month later, it pops up. And I've gone into a few different parts of my computer, my laptop, my iPad. So put it in the question, put it in the comments, but send me an email. And I will immediately answer you in an email. Okay? So again, everything will be in the description below. Now, as you know, I am a very big tool nut. As you could tell from this and those that you follow me from Mike's Woodshop, I'm a massive tool nut. And I believe to have the right tool to do the right job so you can provide a service to your customer for as fast as possible and as neat as possible and as efficiently as possible. So, you know that I've showed my tools. I love Weir, Weira, Nipex, Milwaukee. And so what I did was I buy a lot of tools from this company. It's an online company, and I've mentioned this before, called KC Tools. Now, again, I receive nothing from them. I don't get a kickback. I don't, I just believe that this company is an outstanding company when it's selling these German tools. So they sell like Weir, Weira, Nipex, Stabil. They have a 10, 11 lines, but they're all German tools for different things. But through the years of me using these tools, I have found these tools to be the best. And again, how do you beat something that's this small that can give you that much torque to get into such tight little places? And as you've noticed through past videos, I use these type of tools a lot. They're screwdrivers, they're the, the, the this is German, pliers, everything. So if you go on their site to purchase tools, you put in a promo code, the Renai guy, and you get a 10% discount. Again, I don't make nothing off this thing. It is just something I want to provide to my subscribers from them because they're such a good company. They ship very fast. You get an email. They're, it's a very secure website. Very secure. I am constantly uh, like they want to verify you. So... 
I have no problems with the website paying for this thing. Again, I, I, I like that efficiency. I like how fast I get my tools. I just put an order in um, the other day for more um, Weira pliers and stuff for my little tiny service bag. All right, so um, the other thing that I want to show you is I know I've showed you this, I, uh, parts boxes. So what I did... And I don't know what if I'm going to be putting this in the truck, but this was a rack system that I built with those tennis boxes, the boxes that actually have, and I'll show you, like this one, I got some screws and stuff in it. It's, it's for parts, for the for, for, for put your Renai parts in it, and this is what I use. I use a few of these on my truck, but they make this um, rack system that it'll go in, but then will not come out until you lift it and pull it. And they're rails, and it's um, made by Tannis, but this has a safe fest tool on it. But there, it's a rail system that holds it in, and you can build this and put it in your truck and have your parts in it, your Renai parts. Like a box like this on the bottom, empty and you can easily put filters in here you could put igniters you could put your flame sensors you could you could put um, water servo valve in there I mean even a PC board will fit in here and now you have everything nice and neat in your truck and you can carry it like this you can carry it like this and it will go right in your truck and it will not vibrate out. Again, I'll add that. It's um, called the Sustainer Store, and they sell Tannis. This says Festool because I buy this stuff, and this got stuff like this is a screwdriver and something set. This here is a, um, uh, something for my, 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 my uh, circular saw. Okay, so I'll have that all in the description below. All right, YouTube. I hope you enjoy the video. I hope we're all being safe out there. And you all have a good week, safe and productive, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye now.